Hello everyone, it's Carrie, and in today's video I'm working on an Ever After High doll and making her to look like Cindy Lauper from the Time After Time video. This is sort of a full process video where I'll be going through how I made all of the accessories and the costume, and I'll show some of the hair construction and the face up. Hope you enjoy! So a few videos ago you may have noticed I made a Cindy Lauper, and from that custom I had a couple of requests to make some more Cindy Lauper dolls so uh, this one is a commission piece and the client wanted uh, the version from the time after time video we both agreed that that would be the most fun I think <laughs> so I loved how she had a bunch of accessories and I was really looking forward to getting started on those so I decided to start with the hat box my most I was most excited to make that so I definitely went straight for it. So I'm using some backing board. It's kind of the board that I use for when I have some prints, when I package up my prints. So it's a really nice thick board. Uh, very firm, but not too heavy. And I cut those into circles with a flat edge, and then I covered them with some Mod Podge and some ribbon in the plaid that I had that was most similar to uh, the accessories in the video. This costume has a number of different plaids so I had to go to a couple of different stores to find the just the right plaids to use. They are similar but it was impossible to find the exact pattern at a smaller scale too. I found some of some patterns that were very similar but the 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 fabric pattern was so big that you wouldn't be able to see it, so I had to use some ribbon in some of the cases. But I think they turned out pretty close. So I lined each piece with a piece of uh, felt or what is that? It's not it's not felt. It's like a stretchy felt. What is that called? Anyway, it's kind of a felt um, fabric. And then once I was done lining them, I added some eyelets to the top so I could pull the handle through. Oh, it's fleece. That's what I was think trying to think of. So then I connected all the pieces with some hot glue. And then I added a piece of ribbon to the bottom so it would help it be able to open and close. And covered that with felt and then I glued that to the bottom. So then you can see I can open and close the, the front of the case. I just wanted that little added feature. And then I added another eyelet to the front so we could string th some uh, ribbon through and make a closure. So I'm pulling through the handle. I'm using kind of a silk cording and pulling it through a button on the other side so it doesn't fall through. Tying that off, and then I burn the edges just so they don't fray and come undone. Kind of melts it. I'm doing the same to the ribbon on the front so it doesn't fray. And onto the hat. So I really wanted to use this fabric because I, I felt like it was the closest match to the video, but I had very little of it left. So I actually went and made, this turned out to be too small, <laughs> so I made another one that was larger, but I decided to leave this in the video anyway in case you wanted to see how I made the hat. It's the same way that I made the larger version. If you're going to make a hat for an Ever After High doll, especially one with some thicker hair, you're going to want to probably double up on the size of the circle, like twice the size of the head. Then I, I flat ironed some ribbon in half so I could add that around the edge as a trim. I also went back and added a little rim. So as you can see, the pants were really already done. They were made with some uh, fabric that was similar to the hat fabric that was kind of like a flannel, but they were just some simple p pants. Had to keep this video kind of shorter, so I didn't include that part in here. But now I'm going to make the uh, duffel bag. So I was just kind of measuring in comparison to how big the duffel bag was in the video to how I was going to, how it matched against the doll. So I was going to use some canvas because I really felt like it was a canvas fabric, but 
the canvas weave was just kind of out of scale with the doll. It just kind of looked funny, so I decided to go with this tighter weave fabric that's kind of close to canvas but much thinner. Um, I didn't want it to be see-through, so I doubled it up, and then I used some fabric fuse to fold in the edges. Then I cut some end pieces into circles. And I'm using this fabric fuse paper to fuse to double up the ed that those end pieces as well. Just makes it easier if you want the fabric to be thicker. You can just double it up and if you use this fabric fuse, it's like you've got a, just a thicker piece of fabric there. And then I velcroed the, I have a velcro opening, so I velcroed it together just to kind of measure and then I gathered in the ends a little bit. Just, I didn't want them too tightly gathered, but just enough that it looks similar to the bag that the, that Cindy was using in the video. And then I added the end pieces. So I ended up stuffing this with some tissue just to give it a bigger, fuller look. But here I'm measuring some ribbon for the handle. And what I was going to do was kind of make a 1980s classic duffel bag look by having the ribbon go around the duffel bag into the handles. but. It, I, I looked back at the video and that wasn't how the one that she was carrying was made, so I ended up taking that off. But I left the handles the way that I attached them here. I also added another strip from the end of the duffel bag to, to the where the handle starts there and added a, a little uh, lobster clasp so I could open and close it. Later on I'll be making a lunchbox that goes with the, the excess, one of the accessories and it will hang on that piece. But you can see here I, t I attached it and then later on I realized, well no, I need that to be open and able to be open and closed so I can attach the lunchbox. So I just added a lobster clasp to it. So onto the jacket, I just kind of drew out how I wanted it to be shaped. It was an interesting shape of kind of a, kind of um, baggy. So I just kind of rounded it out and this is just the back of the jacket. I was, I was sitting here waiting. I wasn't sure what I was doing there. I couldn't even remember doing this, but I did line the jacket. <laughs> so I just used a similar fabric, just a nice cotton fabric to line it. I felt like that fabric was too thin, so I did use some fabric fuse to, for each piece that I cut out. I did some fabric fuse and another piece of cloth to give it sort of a lining. And then I stitched it all up and added some ribbons to the shoulders. Now here I am making just a little crop top tank top and it looked like in the video the best I could tell that she was wearing sort of an 80s sweater thing with some, an 80s design which I added later with some fabric paint. So for her hair I decided to draw the, I was kind of navigating the holes that were already in her head, so I decided to draw some checker pattern because she has that classic checker pattern on the side of her head, which was really important to us to make sure that that was a focal point. So I rooted it at first, and then we decided it would look better if I made a change. So later on I went back. Um, I think it looked okay like this, but it wasn't as, it, it turned out to be better the, um, with the flocking. I did sort of a flocking and then paint 
and um, and then added little pieces of hair with some fabric glue to the side and it looked more like the classic but I think this would have been okay as well just not as cool <laughs> so it kind of looks like a checker but not as much because I had to navigate those holes so I'm removing the face paint here with some pure acetone and tightened up her hair so I wouldn't bother that while I was working. And before I get started on the face up, I'm moving on to the first step of making the lunch box. So I started out with a little cube of styrofoam to use as a base. I ended up making, it, it turned out to be too small, so I made a, a box out of cardboard that was the exact size or slightly smaller than I w wanted to use. I was trying to make the lunchbox be in perfect scale with the character. So I just covered it up with some of this epoxy sculpt. And did some sculpting. So the client was kind enough to send me some reference photos, so I'm trying to reference those to make the shape correct. And I gotta say, I struggled with this a little bit, just really how to go about it. I think my approach was completely off and I should have started in a different manner, but would have made it a lot easier on myself but so there you see there's the little box that I ended up making starting over and this was much easier so I made the just taped together some cardboard and then covered that with some epoxy And I think I actually, I don't know if this was the final one, but I did it like a third time because I felt like it was too big, too out of scale, so I ended up making it a little bit smaller. This does look like the right one, though. <laughs> uh, nope, there it is. See, I did a third try and made a very small box. And when I started with this very small box, then it came out the perfect size. So first I just started concentrating on making it a good rectangle and making that sure that the edges were flat. And then I rolled out some more clay and then laid on a flatter piece on top of that. And then I cut out some strips to go around the edges and sculpted those. The top is where I made some pieces to stick up. Um, I had to try to keep it looking like the actual lunchbox, but then I also needed to make them large enough that I can stick some wires through to add the handle and that it wouldn't break. And once I sculpted those out, I stuck a pin through them to make sure I'd be able to put that um, handle through. So I'll revisit some of these accessories at the end of this video, but I'm trying to keep it in the order of that my constructing the character, the whole character. So on to the face up. So like I said in my previous video, I think Cindy Lauper is just so beautiful, and she even gets more beautiful with age. I just am such a fan of hers, her music, and her look. She's just so wonderful. So I hope you guys don't mind me showing you some of my mistakes and challenges that I had with this. As you can see, I drew out the eyes and didn't like them, so then I started over again. Thank you. 
pen onto the shading. I did a very light shading on her face. Her her skin and her features are just like so smooth and flawless that there was very little line work that I had to do, uh, very little shading. It's she just is like a porcelain doll. It's making those classic Cindy lips when she is in a in the time after time video in particular. She has a very sad, pouty look, and I tried to reflect that in the lips that I'm doing here. She just has very distinct, distinguished lips. So I'm adding the blush with Pan Pastel mix that I made and mixing that with some colorless blender to smooth it out. And carrying that up to the forehead a little bit and on the inner eyelids and brow line. So I'm blending out the lip with some highlighted highlights with Pan Pastel. Using Derwent watercolor pencil as well as Faber Castell. I tend to use the Faber Castell Aqua Grip for the tighter areas where I want a nice point, where I need to keep a nice point because it's a harder lead. I may have mentioned this in previous videos. But the supplies that I use are in the description box below along with affiliate links. But if there's anything you feel like is missing or have any questions, please let me know in the comment section. I'll be happy to help. Adding in a couple more layers of white for the eyes and some highlights in the cupid's bow and tear duct area. In a little bit you'll see that I went in with blue eyes. I checked on the internet and you know how the internet is. It said that her eyes were blue but the um, client that I was making this doll for is a Cindy expert and discovered that and let me know that the eyes were green so I went and changed those so I'm not sure I think by the time I had edited this video um, we I, I changed it afterwards so I may not show that um, that eye color change but luckily all I had to do was reseal her with Mr. Super Clear and then add some yellows and greens to change that color and then reseal seal her again. Just trying to add some details in her eyebrows with dark brown and using my sharpenable Faber-Castell uh, eraser to shape them up a little bit. I also went back and added a tear later on which I don't think I captured on camera but if you're interested in how to make tears you can check out my video of how to make tears and we'll put that in an eye card and in, or, or in the description box below. So when starting it on the eyes, I always go back and forth just to try to get the eyes symmetrical, make sure that they're both the same size, and then I start to lay in the color. I 
I start with the outer edges a little bit darker and then blend it in towards the middle using the white Derwent watercolor pencil. If you're new to customizing and would like to learn a little bit more, I invite you to view some of my previous videos. And we have some playlists set up with how-tos how and tutorials, full process videos. So I'd love it if you subscribe if you haven't already. And I'd love it if you would like this video. If you, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Once I was happy with the eyes, I went in and gave her some eyelashes, bottom lashes, and her eyes are a little bit smaller than some of the other dolls that I'm using or I'm creating. So I changed the eye bottom eyelashes a little bit, made them a little bit slantier. Her face up is a little challenging with my style because she has very small eyes. They're just like a beautiful character to her eyes that I wanted to capture, but at the same time I wanted to keep it with my style, which is big, huge, round eyes. So, so I think I did a sort of in-between. So I'm giving her some highlights, and then like I said, I will add some eyelashes to the bottom, and then I also added some false eyelashes, some ball-jointed doll-style eyelashes to the top after she was sealed. So I seal her with four coats of Mr. Super Clear, and then I glossed the eyes and lips with some Liquitex Gloss Varnish. So there's her face up. So like I said, I'm revisiting this. Uh, the last thing I did was do this lunchbox, which was probably the most time consuming of the entire project, but I really wanted to make sure that I got it right. So after some final sculpting and carving, I sanded it down and I'm removing the excess with that wax fabric and went back in and, and using the reference photos I painted out a similar drawing to what was on the actual lunchbox. So once I painted that I added some wire to the top and some vinyl to make a handle and then I sealed it all with Mr. Super Clear about four times and then added some final gloss sealant um, some Liquitex gloss varnish with just with my finger to add I wanted I didn't want it completely glossed but I wanted to add some glossy areas just so it kind of looked a little beat up and aged so I wanted some of that flat part to remain So this was a longer video than I've been putting out lately. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. And again, if you did, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section. And I hope everybody is having a great day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.